Welcome back to Nightcap Chat, the pop culture podcast. We talk all things comic books, video games, movies, TV shows, and more. Today, we're talking about nothing, something, and everything. I'm Blade O'Neill. I'm Kim Brown. I'm Blade O'Neill. Man, I feel like we haven't done this in forever. But before we get into that, just want to thank you all for taking the time to listen, like, share, and subscribe to Nightcap Chat. My goodness, the last episode we recorded was episode 100. And I know there's been two episodes since then. And it's already our one of our best episodes ever. So my goodness, thank you all for coming through. Because that episode, it was long. And uh, Steve, in particular, put a lot of time and effort into that. Um, so thank you all so, so much for that. But yeah, we... Uh, we pre-recorded those other two episodes, episode 101 and 102. Um, we we showed our interview with CJ from the Views from the Ceiling Fan podcast. That was the whole episode. If we included that in episode 100, it would have been an hour longer than it already was. And then we finished our top 10 villains list, which was, which was fun and exciting. It was fun and exciting. And, and did people actually listen to the second half this time, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Not yeah. just the first half. Yeah. Thank you no, for I, that. Yes, yes. And, and I see that, and I see that trend. So it's all, it's all good. So thank you. Uh, I think, I think, you know, I think, uh, Venom was like the only one that was in some capacity on all of our lists. Wasn't Thanos a snap for all three of us too? Oh, was Thanos on your list? Yeah, he was on. He was everyone's one except for mine. He was two for me. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's like that's like a big yeah. Bag. It's like I mean, a you, given. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. how can you? You can't go wrong with that. Else, um, I just thought the Venom thing was was interesting, especially with the movie coming up. Um, so we're gonna talk about a couple of things going on in the the world right now, or the world of pop culture, while we were quote gone. Because we we've been pre-recording, so like you know, like three weeks have gone by and we we haven't done uh, nightcap chat. <clears throat> There's something I want to touch on, and we're gonna touch on this very briefly because I think it's important. Because we love comic books, right? And and we love comic book artists. And we've how many times have we talked about comic book artists? And you know, and and I hope to have more on the show. I mean, like we've had we've already had Livio uh, Romandelli on the show, and. Uh, there, there is a few more artists I, I plan on having on asking on in the in the near future, but I mean, comic art, you know, like I mean, I think it'd be safe to say, the, you know, that's that's what attracts you to a book, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's the it's the selling point and the clickbait of, of of comics. I mean, it's like, wow, look at that that Spider Man cover, look at that Iron Man cover, or the Black Cat cover. I mean, it's just like it draws you in, it gets your interest, and then the pictures on the inside too. I mean. It really just brings the character to life that much more. That's the whole premise for the name of my store. If I want to get that deep on it, oh. I mean, the world, but why I named the store Drawn to Comics is we're all drawn to the art that is inside of a comic book. And it's, uh, that said too, is that the uh, comic book art, my whole philosophy, if you don't have the art, it's just a novel. <laughs> and art is the key point of the comic book form of storytelling. Yep. No, one hundred percent. Um, and and we've talked about some of our favorite experiences with artists in the past. Um, and something that's always stood out to me. Um, so you guys, you know, every time I've talked about uh, J. Scott Campbell to somebody, you guys all said what a great guy he was. He loved him, and I know I've kind of like poked fun of him for for no reason. And I and I and I said like my silly reason why I was like, oh no, I don't like J. Scott Campbell. Because he he ruined my Deadpool collection because that that cover's not going for a thousand dollars. So like I'm just being stupid, you know. And I and I hope you guys all realize that. Um, so speaking of stupid things, uh, something stupid happened uh, a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> there was this whole phenomenon on the internet, and we're we're only going to briefly talk about this because we're going to bring this back to a to a very positive thing here. Um, somebody on the in the world of the internet, and we're just going to call this person somebody because. You don't deserve to even be named. If you want to look up the story, you can. Somebody decided to fix J. Scott Campbell's art as if there was something wrong with it. And they they took the famous, um, what was the cover, Ken? It was the one with Mary Jane. Spider-Man 601, Thanks. where she's sitting holding the cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With her, yeah. I, I can't react it because I don't have Mary Jane's body, obviously. Yeah. 
But <laughs> oh, thank goodness. All right. Yes. But, I mean, but I he's just kind of looking over her shoulder as yes. Spider Man swinging outside the window, mm-hmm. and she's kind of like pining for Peter to be there with her rather than out saving the world. But and it is I just, what it is. I just. That's why Black Cat's the better girlfriend. <laughs> yes, there you, there you go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, I, I have a I have a particular mission with Nightcap Chat to not not talk about anything stressful or controversial, but I love artists and I respect them so much that I just want to get on a soapbox super super fast. You can't fix art. There's no fixing art. Art is art. Okay, there is no right or wrong in art. Art is all subjective. Okay, and as J. Scott Campbell said, you know it's it's tacky to do. It's tacky to like take someone's art and then redraw it. Like, give me a break. The whole reason that this spoiled little brat did this was because this is where you draw the line, right? But at the same time, this kind of person that's doing this is probably the same person that thinks Cardi B's WAP is like a Shakespearean work of art, okay? You know, when you're given like the problems he was pointing out with with this uh, piece of art, is the art that J. Scott Campbell did bad? No. Give me a break. Art is subjective and it's an expression of all facets of human behavior. Okay. What was being expressed is a primal human truth. And there is nothing wrong with that. And if you disagree with me, you're wrong. And that's it. And that's my little... Can I just make one statement about the whole situation? Please. I kind of wish Jay Scott just would have said, hey, thanks for your opinion. Have a nice day. And just kind of gave the guy the shaft and mm-hmm. just kind of blew him off. Because unfortunately, during this whole situation, Jay Scott's always been like a really good altruistic, attituded artist towards fans. And then this was the first time he kind of snapped back and it made him look bad, which is something I don't think he deserved as much bad publicity as he got through this whole situation. It turned into a social media nightmare unfortunately for j scott campbell because he stood up for his artwork and that was an unfortunate side of this whole situation in my opinion was it 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 became so much more blown up than it needed to be if j scott just would have said hey thanks for your opinion man i appreciate it have a great day you do your art your way and i'll do my art my way and that's it you know it's like that appreciate appreciate what you do but this is what i do and thanks have a great day uh I, I just, I feel like the whole situation is just stupid. I mean, yeah. sure, he could have not uh, responded to the person, but any negative or bad publicity that he got was, wasn't was from his, like, actual fans. Like, if you're, if you're a fan of this artist, that moment isn't an eye-opening, like, some amazing moment where you're like, oh, wow, this is not a, like, somebody, like, what? Give me a break. Like, you're not exactly. a human being that I want following me if I'm J. Scott Campbell anyway. So goodbye. See you later. Just taking out the trash at that point. I mean, it's his art. Like Blade said, it's it's art. There's so many other things. Like, it's just your interpretation of something. I mean, and yeah. he's even doing his, and I'm sorry, this his, you know, his uh, Amazing Spider-Man 607, which is a way better comic cover than the Mary Jane comic cover. <laughs> it's not even close. Um, he's having artists, you know, go out and, and, and all over, you know, Instagram and Twitter and, and, and do their own interpretation of it. And it's awesome. And it's great to see all these different mm-hmm. interpretations of it. And some of these, some of these are amazing. I'm not gonna lie. Like there's a couple of them that I saved in my phone. Cause I, I think it's like almost as good as his, like it, it's so good and it's, and it's awesome to see. So, you know, yeah. like, just the whole situation is just stupid and it's just exactly. part of the world. You didn't need to comment. I think in the future, just, you know, just ignore the stupidity and don't give them time of day. Well, and- it was unfortunate that he took it to as far as actually correcting his own piece. And I go, dude, Jay Scott, you should never have to correct your own piece because some fan wants to say like, this is how it should look in my eyes. They go, oh, great. Then that's your drawing. That's no longer Jay Scott's drawing. That's, that other guy's interpretation of what Mary Jane should look like there. And then stop hacking on J. Scott Campbell's art style if you want to draw it your way because all he redid was J. Scott Campbell's Mary Jane arms and saying that's 
that's not really anatomically correct. It's like, dude, it's it's art. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's not human form. It's art form. And I see what well, you're saying completely, Blade. But to <clears throat> what you, I wanted to bring up the he did do the corrected version, but that wasn't him giving in. He did turn that into a positive because he listed it on eBay for charity. Oh, made seven. So he, yeah, it was so like he turned it grand into a positive it? thing. Um, yes. Yeah, it was like fourteen thousand. Um, so, 14, so I and the cor- and for the record, the corrected version of it is when they did the variant with black cat sitting there. And <laughs> <up>. <laughs> yes, but anyway, we've mm-hmm. we've said a our lot. piece. We love J. Scott mm-hmm. Campbell. He's great. Yes. the whole thing was stupid. So yeah. just don't don't be that don't be that. that person, right? I yeah. think we can at least agree on that, right? Um, so there's other comic book news too. And Ken, I'll let you kind of, kind of take away what's happening with, uh, DC here. Cause you told, you told us right before. And like, I was I'm already laughing. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I get a phone call from, uh, or text actually from Susan last week saying like, Hey, did you see that DC comics was sold? And I'm going, what? It's like, the, yeah, it's like, our uh, staff member and a customer said that DC comics was sold off by AT&T today. I'm going, what in the world are you talking about? I didn't like, I didn't even hear this coming. And so I uh, go online to try to do some research and I find an article that I'm sure enough, like AT&T sold off stock shares of a reorganization to sell Warner Brothers video games and DC Comics Entertainment to Discovery Channel. And then they bought Discovery Channel, I guess, as part of that process and branched off a separate division of Discovery Channel and DC Comics being under its own umbrella of AT&T, but it's no longer any creative control by AT&T over DC Comics. And Discovery Channel Creative is now in charge of going to be in charge of DC Comics Creative. So AT&T has 73% stock holding share in this new company. So they're just banking in the money off of whatever happens with Discovery Channel's creative control over DC Comics. I do find it ironic that Discovery Channel is also a DC Comics (laughs) acronym or DC acronym. Yeah. So, but I don't know if that is something that's, it sounds like a big joke, I guess, like, you know what I mean? It's, um, it's, it's been confirmed, I guess, in multiple areas, but it kind of like flew under the radar as a big deal. And I think it's because AT&T stockhold share is still the majority owner of DC Comics. It's just, they're no longer paying for the creative side of it. It's a separate division that's in charge of all the creative side of it. And then they're just going to rank in the benefits of the financial sides of being stockholder shares inside of the the new company. So, so does that mean in August we're going to get uh, a week of comic variants? That's just Shark Week for DC, and it's just going to be like shark on every cover. <laughs> like, what? What is? What are they thinking? Aquaman's going to host Shark Week. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised because Marvel's doing that whole thing with the NBA where they had that Marvel NBA night. Did you see that? No. No. A couple of weeks ago, they had Marvel superhero NBA night to try to appeal to kids the same way that Nickelodeon did with the NFL during the playoffs. And it's just kind of, they're trying to pull in a new audience. And supposedly, like I said, Taylor heard a little bit about this on sports radio. I'd even really hear about it in the comic side of the world. And they're, uh, you know, one of the sports talk radio hosts, Dan Bickley's son, was talking about it the next day. So he goes, I guess they did their parks. My son's talking about Marvel comics being at the NBA game and he never even cares about watching the NBA. And so it was a uh, kind of an interesting little thing going on there. And so uh, there's a lot of cross promotion referencing, I guess, starting to happen with comics being mass media opportunities for companies to use these comic book characters to pull in new audiences. Oh, but what does, what does Discovery Channel or DC offer to one? And like, I just don't understand the the mesh here. Like, it just to me, it doesn't make any sense. D- Discovery Channel does what? Like, they do 
the I'm naked scared. and afraid shows? Are we going to get Batman naked in Gotham and chasing down the Joker or something? Like what? What is? I mean, what is like the the whole like thing behind? Well, I'll this? tell you what it. it is. Is like there. It's not the cash cow that they were hoping for. They wanted billion dollar blockbuster after billion dollar blockbuster. While they got a couple, they had the flops in between, and they're like, "Oh, this isn't." the ROI that I was expecting. Let's like, I, I thought they wanted to get rid of it. So like this, to me, this, this isn't surprising. Um, what is it's that? Not, it's just surprising what person it is. It's not like, it's like, Oh, yeah. you sold it to like a, someone who makes movies. You know what I mean? You sold it to discovery channel. Yes. <laughs> what, what's even weirder. I mean, I know HBO Here's Mac. what I text my staff based off of what I read. So I said, so AT&T has relinquished all creative control and decision-making with DC Comics. I go, this will be good. Just got this shared with me today. Here are my thoughts, what I read in the article. What I'm reading is a merger where a new entity was created where AT&T is no longer involved with creative development, but they still hold stock in the new entity. So AT&T is still a shareholder, but has no creative or financial influence on DC Comics moving forward. So they just get the financial benefit with no more interest in DC Comics development. That will now be held by the new WB Discovery Corporate en- Discovery Corporate Entity. Huh. Very interesting development is what I responded in a text to people in my my uh, our group text for our staff. So in the art, it's co- Cosmic Book News. Are they a reliable source at all? Uh, flip a coin, maybe. Yeah. You said cosmic, like, yeah. Cosmic book news. DC Comics, WB Games sold so, an AT and T. All, all of this is di- is from Twitter coming from Twitter. like Twitter. There's like leaks from yeah, Twitter supposedly. This this article had the most detail of anything that I read, so that's why I kind of shared this one with my staff. So if this uh, yeah. if this means anything to you about the legitimacy of Cosmic Book News. Four days ago, they did an article saying that Warner Brothers could be sold to Disney and joining Marvel. So, yeah, I've, I've heard that recently too. I'm that's going, pretty that's dumb. That North would North never happen, especially after that, this whole transaction takes place. Why would they sell again? No, it's just the the government wouldn't even allow. That's probably wouldn't even allow that to happen. That's we get blocked. They almost stopped them from getting Fox. Getting Fox, yeah. Yeah, because well, not, they had to not absorb um, Fox sports. sports, right? Yeah. Because they already owned ESPN. So, yeah, they, I could totally mm-hmm. see them blocking DC because you can't have Marvel and DC. What What's left? Yeah. I mean, yeah, Image is great, but it's still not Marvel or DC. Yeah, but that's still like 1% of comic books, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think Fox sold off everything except their news and sports. Wasn't that the deal? Exactly. Like that yep. was, yeah. Exactly what we're yeah. saying. Because, yeah. Yeah. Because the monopoly. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, it'll be interesting. Like we'll have to wait and see how exactly uh, DC gets impacted here. But I mean, it's interesting. I mean, can't, be, can't get worse, right? Yeah, less, I mean, yeah. Well, here we go. Don't, never say never, right? That's true. I don't know. Um. So we got a we got a few things, a couple of things. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up now. <laughs> Ken's laughing. Ken, you <laughs> Ken, you, you Play just asking Ken for, to start off with the topic. Just find something. No, he has something. He has something. But don't don't call it top five. We'll, we'll call us just like um, we're just gonna take a trip down memory lane. Let's let's leave it at that. And maybe right. some well, current uh, philosophies. Don't laugh, Ken. This is your idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I don't know why, but earlier in the day, I was thinking about shoes I owned as a kid. And just what were some of my favorite <laughs> shoes that are just stupid like that? Do you know what I mean? That were trends back when we were kids. Hell yeah. But are no longer even remembered anymore. Like the the first one that came to my mind was kangaroos. Do you remember kangaroo shoes? I think they still made athlete shoes up until about 15, 20 years ago. I've never, I'm, I'm pretty sure I haven't even heard of that. Yeah, kangaroos were shoes with pockets. <laughs> shoes with pockets. 
Yes, and I remember being in, I want to say, fourth grade, fifth grade. There was a red pair that looked like Chuck Taylor high tops. Okay. But they had zippers on them, so you could put your keys, money, whatever you wanted to put in your shoes. And whatever reason, I thought that was, like, the coolest thing. He's in money. He really keeps trying to keep this, you know, PG, huh? Yeah, I... What, I, what, I, what, <laughs> what else are you going to put in your shoes? <laughs> I'm, I'm already, like, saving, like, the two yeah. jokes I have. Oh, so, so, I guess I didn't realize it was the first version of Dopeman shoes. Because <laughs> Nike has, like, a, you know, a pretty much a pop culture shoe that people refer to as Dopemans. I guess I can kind of understand like why they call them dope men's shoes now that uh, now that you mentioned that, <laughs> but uh, they were just, I don't know what it was, dude, but there was, there was just something magical about shoes with pockets for me in fourth grade. And I don't know why, but it was just something that was like, I never really cared about shoes up until that point. And for whatever reason, like that was like my trigger point of thinking like these things that go on my feet can actually be fun. And, uh, I was just wondering if you guys like had any kind of like shoe memories that were kind of like, ooh, man, dude, these are freaking awesome. I need to have these for whatever reason. And usually I'm not that I'm not that materialistic about things, but those shoes were really freaking cool to me as a kid. And I don't I don't obviously because I remember and I'm like, I just turned 47 yesterday and this is uh, 37 years since I've got these shoes and they still stick in my head. Made some kind of impact on me. It's kind of funny. Oh. The only shoes I can think of when I was a kid is the the light up shoes. Like I, I always wanted yeah. the light up shoes. Like you step and it like lights up. Like that yeah, those were light. so cool. Yeah, <laughs> yes. and and uh, between that and I also had a shoe that um, it was like I don't know. It was like air in the bottom, almost. But you know, like it was just like clear plastic for the heel. Yeah, Nike Air. I just thought that was kind of cool. I don't know if it was a Nike Air. I can't remember. No. Um. Oh, I I know what you're talking about now. Nike Air. No. But it was like a plastic on the sides, and you could just you almost see through it. And I remember I was like, "Oh, these are so cool. They're comfortable. Like I'm sure that you'll like bounce more and get like more. You know, you jump higher out of it." So. So Ken Ken's (laughs) reference to the Nike Air is yes, it's the it's a similar concept. And I've and I've seen the shoe. I think what Lance is referring to, if I remember correctly, was like some kind of kids knockoff version of yeah, uh, Nike was. Air, but same same concept. So like that's that's right on. Or did I remember jumping and landing on it from probably jumping over like the fence or something, and the thing just popped like Oof, did yeah. you like the, the the yeah the 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 air pocket like the little plastic on the side yeah. just like broke oh, and i was like oh i didn't know that and it was every time i step because of the air was, now you, you can get the air out it would like yeah. suction for a little bit every time <laughs> <laughs> and it was so annoying like the heel would just like catch yeah dude that's yeah, like it's it's kind of got a funny story about those little la the lights um, yeah i used to you know probably people know that i used to be what they call a shoe dog in the lingo of the industry where I I sold shoes multiple times during my college career. And like one of the college jobs I had was kids foot locker Mm -hmm. and those LA light, those lights you're talking about. Oh my gosh, dude, kids would just go nuts for those um, lamps. I remember those very vividly because the larger size ones, they had little inserts where you could pull out the light and change the battery on it and put it back in the shoe. Mm. So what would our employees, what we would do is like that those lights, if you squeeze on the trigger, you could take it out of the shoe and it makes a red beam of light that shines out of it and you can more or less, we could we were targeting customers across the mall and like people go, what's this thing chasing me? Like there are bullet, <laughs> <laughs> bullet oh aimer things gosh. on it. And people like would try brushing it off, and it was just the most hilarious thing. And that's the you know one of the fun trouble things we do when there's bored and there's no customers is check this out, man. Shoe <laughs> just, store confessions like, here. Kids like chasing on the ground even in front of them sometimes. And if there was like a dog walking in the mall, we'd we'd tease that a little bit every once in a while. But Aww. it was it was just hilarious what those little lights could do. Wow, wow, yeah. I mean, like I'm. 
obviously like light up light up sneakers you know like that that sticks out in my mind you know i remember like kindergarten first grade you know oh your shoes light up like oh, that was just so cool you know um why was that cool i don't even know like why is that even cool <laughs> you know? you're young and it's like bright lights i like, guess so that's, guess that's all that it just, takes <laughs> you know i've never I was never really into shoes, you know, like shoe That's shopping seemed like a chore, a chore. <laughs> well, hold on. Because, uh, you know, we we went to uh, we went to private school, so we had dress shoes, you know. I only I like to wear loafers, you know, when I was allowed to make a decision. Did you have to put the pen in your loafer for dress good? Um, I don't think I ever did that. I don't think I ever had penny loafers. Okay. Could be wrong. Um. But I did like, I did like my Nikes, you know, when I was, uh, you know, high school kid and, and what's right before high school kid, like a, a young adolescent is, is that like, like middle, school? middle school? Yeah. Like a middle school. Okay. Like I liked my Nikes, you know, we, we would we'd play basketball, you know, when we lived in New York and, you know, it was, it was a cool brand, you know? And then, I don't know, you know, a little after high school, like, you know, you're out on your own. I don't want to spend money on shoes, no. you know, like, gosh, you know, I bought whatever, whatever worked, you know, I had this, I had this pair of loafers that I had, you know, since I graduated eighth grade, you know, that, that fit me, you know, I think I still have those shoes. You I, know? I think that's accurate. Cause my, I think my foot stopped growing in eighth grade too. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. pretty I sure. I was a 12 yeah. at 12 yeah, exactly. and then it stopped yeah. growing. Yep. Yep. Wow. Right there. But see, here's the thing. Uh, over the last like year or so, I don't know what happens. I've I've lost my mind, and I've I've come to accept this, <laughs> and that's and that's fine. Mm-hmm. And you should see, like I've I have all these things saved and wish lists, and I have these websites. Like I'm I'm in the process of redoing my wardrobe right now, and and shoes are gonna be really impacted. To go with some of my some of my new clothes here. So I'm, I'm, all, I know he has no idea what I'm saying. Well, if, actually, if you guys listen to episode a hundred, you know, with my leopard print, print everything. yes, I've got these leopard print shoes. They're like oh. these leather boots on deck. I've got these snakeskin ones that are gray, these black snakeskin ones and these other just leather ones. And, oh, I've, I have a newfound appreciation for, for shoes. I found what I like. And what I've been missing. Cause like, I, I don't like buying shoes and I found these, they don't have laces, you know? And like these, these are the shoes I'm, I'm going to be acquiring. Uh, cause my brother's oh, a 70 year old lady. <laughs> <laughs> Do what I want, you know, just live your life, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, right now, but I, the, the interesting thing right now with shoes is like, none of my shoes have laces. I don't like wearing laces. I think the shoelace is antiquated technology, but I recently bought some, uh, some high top converse all-stars and those have laces yeah. cause, but that's different to me because it has a, a classic vintage look and it needs that lace, you know, but that, who doesn't like Ankles. converse though? I don't like converse. Okay. Lance doesn't like converse, really? but again, you, you, you like converse at least yeah. a little bit, right? I used to, yeah, I'd go through the Chuck Taylor phase. I remember getting my first Chuck Taylors yeah. in seventh grade, which is crazy. Like I said, too, I got weird shoe memories. I don't know why it's just flowing through my memory right now. Yeah. But I remember turquoise was my first color of converse I had as a kid. Wow. And random. I remember throwing it like, remember, do you ever remember the tie dye generation? Do you guys ever have any? I mean, we're like, 90s kids. Yeah. Okay, cool, dude. So like, <laughs> like yeah. tie dye was just becoming like a huge thing back in like when I was in seventh grade. So right. people like were starting to experiment with tie dyeing and including tie dye in their shoes. So I threw my shoes in the wash with bleach, and I bleached my Converse. <laughs> what? I was thinking I was like so genius, like this is awesome. And what do you think happened to those shoes, dude? Straight white. When, 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 when I threw them in the dryer, they destroyed them. Yeah, Converse are not well yeah. built shoes. It's no, and they're I was not. So excited, and I tried putting them back on. It was first of all they were they were pretty much destroyed, and canvas shrinks. When you put it in the dryer, too. <laughs> oh. And so I couldn't even put them on my feet. And I go, 
Oh, so every time friends come up, dude, chill, I do with my Converse, but they won't fit my feet anymore. <laughs> and it was like the uh, worst thing I ever did with a pair of shoes. And my dad's like, that. no, dude, it's like that. I'm not getting you another pair of Converse because you're going to go do the same thing again. So when I got to, once again, college and out of college, I remembered Converse. And one of my first um, jobs out of college was being a manager for the Converse store over really? in Chandler. Yeah. Yes. And so... I was like going like a kid back in a candy store again, having all these flashbacks of Chuck Taylors. And they were, I think like something between like 1999 and 2499 a pair. So they're the most like affordable. How would you say it? Trendy shoes in the marketplace at that time frame. And I remember like I would uh, get the discount there. If I remember the discount it was like 35% off a of retail. So I would stock up on my Chuck Taylors, low tops and high tops. And I would rotate out the colors while on the job. So I figured to myself oh like that, my hey, gosh. it's like that. What's better than selling one pair of shoes, selling two pairs of shoes and starting like a little bit of a fashion type of fun thing with it. So it's, and it was fun. It worked every once in a while. Most people would say, you know, I'll stick to one color because I'd always bring out two colors to show them. And then it's like, see, look at mine. You could do this color match up. And Heck. it was it was almost kind of a fun thing to do with Chuck Taylor shoes. So Chuck's got kind of a affection when it comes to shoe history with me. Oh, yeah. And I, I didn't realize you were such like a fashion icon. Like, oh, that's my cheaper. goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Kind my fashion comic- sense, I think, stopped in the year about 2004, <laughs> 2005 when I opened the comic shop. <laughs> so, <laughs> because you, you need no fashion sense opening a comic shop. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I could see that. Um, one of the really funny, like a funny piece of my history. What's that? I never owned a comic book character shirt until I opened the store. Isn't no kidding. Yeah, that was kind of, it's kind of strange. I was like, kind of, I wanted to prove you could be a comic book fan without having to look nerdy, which is kind of a weird saying. To be, saying to be fair, um, there wasn't a lot of mainstream comic book t-shirts up until like mm-hmm. the movie started getting popular. So I, I can totally see that. Um, Converse for me. And I, and I want to bring this up because of what we might talk about next week. Converse got on my radar when I was 11 years old and um, I was getting into Dragon Ball Z. And my favorite character, mm-hmm. my favorite character was Frieza until the Android saga came on. And um, my favorite Dragon Ball Z character, Android 17. Oh, man, like he just had such a cool look. He had a black T-shirt with a long white, long sleeve white shirt underneath it. He had an orange bandana, jeans, and he wore a pair of Converse with green socks. And that's when I first won a Converse. And Converse, quite frankly, are pretty expensive. And, and I didn't get Converse um, when I was a kid. I, I think I wanted them, and I just I just didn't. Um, so I, I finally got my first pair when I was maybe like 19 18, 19, somewhere, somewhere in there. And I like those just the regular black ones. And it was for the same reason. Like I was obviously, you know, I was in a quote adult, you know, at that time. Um, but I, I got a pair just like Android 17 and those are my first, and I wore Converse all the time at that point. And I started working at a, I'm just going to say I started working somewhere and <laughs> there was somebody I couldn't stand, like the one person I couldn't stand in the office. And he started wearing Converse and he's like, oh, we match. And I was it. I stopped wearing a Converse. I was not going to have something in common. I didn't buy Converse for years after that. I, I guess I'm a little petty, but I stopped wearing Converse for a while because I could not stand this person. Uh, but until recently, I, I bought the, the Converse high tops because I, I, I dig them. The Converse are good. Uh, but I think my favorite pair of shoes of all time, and you guys haven't brought it up, and it's, it's making me uh- sad. I, d- I didn't want to, br- I was going to call you out on it if you didn't mention yeah. it. Cause I was okay. like, what is this nonsense? Oh, okay. I was going to say, there's literally what the next thing was coming out of my mouth was to be like, Blade, you're full of garbage. There's one. You haven't talked about your favorite shoes. There's ever. one pair of shoes and they, they were the best pair of shoes. And I, and I wore these around. I wore them in high, I wore these around in high school and I saw little kids just skating around on them. They were, they were Heelys. Wheelies? Heelys. Heelys. Yeah. Yeah, they, have, yeah, they have a little skate, skate wheel in the bottom that you could yeah. pop out. 
So <laughs> one day I went to the mall and I was like, they have to make these for adults. And I found them and I bought them and I wore them everywhere. And I, and I would walk around just, shoo, shoo. it was like a superior way of walking for years. It, I was, I was in Embarrassed going out with you when you were wearing those. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I was like mortified. No, these how many are... times did you fall, Blade? Because that's something too. I kept on. I remember wheelies being big, like when I was selling shoes before opening the store. And I remember seeing kids like every once in a while I'd see them just eat it, and I'm kind of going, "Oh my gosh, dude! Like, how were the parents buying these for them?" And I think didn't you eat it once at the mall really bad? Did I? I don't. I don't remember eating it. I just I remember skating around like a Greek god. <laughs> I don't remember eating it. I was an adult. Well, I was an adult. I was 15, 16. <laughs> I think I still have them somewhere. You can try them on again, dude. But, yeah, they, that would they be awesome. Me. I don't know if I threw them out in the in the move or not. Um but they were they were awesome. And I remember I got a I got a summer gig with with one of my friends. Um, just to make like, I don't know, 50 or a hundred bucks for, for a couple hours of work. Um, there was a store at the now defunct, uh, Metro center mall, a jewelry store, and we got paid to put flyers on people's cars. So me and my friend, we went through the whole Metro center parking lot, but I had my Heelys. So what did I do? I was so fast at putting these, these, uh, flyers on people's cars, but, uh, there's a there's a bar in Metro Center and these two drunk guys were out there and and they uh they turned to my friend and I was like, You guys look like a couple of Twinkies and we're like like what? A couple of Twinkies Twinkies. Like what what does that mean? Like, you know, like like brothers. And we we're like, Oh, okay. And then like we left. Cause like I don't even think we look alike. I mean we both had beards, but that was that was about it. Anyway. Heelys were awesome. Okay. Nice. <laughs> oh boy. So I think the the only pair of shoes that I've ever had that I like loved, I bought them a couple years in a row. And I don't think they make the same exact design anymore, so it's kind of upsetting. Is in college I had these um I had these turf shoes for, for baseball. They're baseball turf shoes. So it was made to play on, on tur- artificial turf because you can't use cleats on artificial turf. So there were these, like, they looked like regular sneakers, but they had, like, a lots of, like, good grips on the bottom of it. And it was just, like, the most comfortable shoe I ever wore. And I kept buying them and buying them. And then I think they stopped making that same, like, one. And I don't remember the name of it, unfortunately. But they were so they were so stylish and so comfortable, and they were I just loved them. Oh my gosh, it was so good. What about so, all your Coles shoes? Oh, that is the coolest shoe I ever had. What do you mean, Coles? Oh, my Coles shoes. Those were <laughs> garbage shoes. So I'd go to Coles, buy a pair of shoes. After two months, they would wear out and have holes in them, and I would go back to Coles. And their return policy was you could return your shoes within a year and basically no questions asked for like any reason. So I just bring them back be like, listen, these didn't even last me two months. They give me a new pair of shoes. And I did that for like a couple of years and then was just like, you know, I'm sick of going to Kohl's and returning my shoes. I'm just going (laughs) to buy better shoes. So for any of you questioning whether, man, Kohl's doesn't have as good a product as, as like an actual like Nike store or something like that. Yeah, they don't have as good product. It's garbage. Well, no, that's that is correct. I mean, there's there's this documentary. I don't I don't know what it is, but like even if a company makes something that's the same at Kohl's as Macy's, whatever, they they make it with a lesser quality, you know, materials and stuff like it's this is what they do. Material. Yeah, that's yeah. why. That's why you always see the clearance racks at Kohl's, like get a shirt for two dollars. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, Kohl's has a purpose, but it Kohl's does sell cheaper stuff. And that's just a fact. You know. Yeah. yeah. And I live that fact, so yeah. <laughs> Who knew we could talk so much about shoes? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So something you said in, that was interesting, Ken, is like you we 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 caught you kind of being silly as a shoe salesman here, you know? Yes. 
is there is there any other kind of like odd job? You know, maybe it was like a brief job. And anybody else have any any other silly job stories? Because it, it reminded me of something that that I used to do. Doing. I've got okay. quite a few of those too, but I'll let you guys go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't. It's I don't like know. That. Well, yeah. What is it? It's like that. Uh, man, dude. It's like which one should I, would I want to start with? Which is kind of well. Crazy. Don't get yourself in um, trouble. <laughs> you know? Okay. Don't let oh, someone sure. listen to this episode like you admitted to this, and it's a health code violation. <laughs> no, no, yeah, dude. Nothing that bad. Um, just like. Man, dude, trying to, it's, it's, I only did it for like one day and I hated it. So I stopped it and it was going door to door selling newspaper subscriptions. Oh, that sounds awful. to do that? Yes. No, and it was, it was, it was, it was pretty horrible. All they did was like, it was kind of creepy. It was a, uh, I want to say like sophomore in high school. They, you got in this car with some like 40, 50 year old guy and they would drop you off in neighborhoods and then pick you up two hours later. And that was kind of like. One, it might have been magazine subscriptions now that I think of it. it was either yeah. I think it was no, I'm pretty sure it was Arizona Republic. It was either Arizona Republic subscriptions or those magazine subscriptions. Yeah. And oh my gosh, dude, going knocking on the doors and people answering and then you're reading from the script. It's like, oh yeah, are you a subscriber to the Arizona Republic? And most nine out of ten people would already say, like, uh, if I was, I would buy it on my own. I wouldn't give you any money, kid, type of weird things. And dogs barking at you. And it was just kind of like, you know, waiting. I remember, you know, waiting on the curve for the guy to pick us up at the end of the day. And it was starting to get dark. And you're wondering like that, okay, I'm in this strange neighborhood. And I don't know what the heck's going to happen here. Mm-hmm. Like 14, 15 years old, hanging out by yourself in strange neighborhoods. And I was going like that. Yeah, it's like a went home and I shared the experience and says, yeah, it's like, you should, you should probably quit that job. That job sounds like that sucks. <laughs> and yeah. I said, but yeah, it's like my first real job. It's like, no, no, dude, that's, that's not a real job. That's just them trying to get you to do their work for them. And uh, just trying to canvas subscriptions. It was, it was pretty horrible. I said too, it was like a, and I said too, it was like, it wasn't nothing too horrible happened other than the fact of like, it was just kind of the most, unsafe environment i felt like that you worked at when you're like just like a teenager and just trying to get your first job and try to get your feet wet on whether you know like what the workforce was really like and yeah, yeah. it was a i mean i did a paper out when i was like 10 11 years old and that was fine compared to this yeah but it was going like oh, okay i did a paper i was a kid i could sell subscriptions to it and it was just like yeah and i said too just being dropped off in a random neighborhood and have to go knock on people's doors door to door it was yeah, super, super creepy. No kidding. Yeah. My goodness. That's my third one. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I think the... I feel like there's a job that I'm, like, literally mentally blocking out. Um, <laughs> but and I'm pretty sure there is. I just can't think of it. Um, but I think the the weirdest job, and I had it for, like... I had it for, like, what was it? Like, almost a year? And I ended up losing the job because I, because of uh, like they just got rid of like they were cutting back on the hours of it or whatever. But the the college I used to play baseball for, uh, I I got a job working in the gym of the college, and literally the only thing I was there to do was to sit there, and when somebody came to work out, they had to sign in on the piece of paper. And then they had to sign out. And it was literally, you're just there for like, like in case somebody gets hurt, there was somebody there kind of a thing where they signed in, like whatever. That's literally it. So first of all, there would be like maybe three people would show up the entire day. Maybe. So there was a TV there and there was actually me and one other person for whatever reason, there's two, two of us working and there was like no reason that there was two people working. And we were making like, slightly above minimum wage which was insane um because the gym was like the size (laughs) which is literally nothing like you don't do anything but just sit there and half the time i'd just work out or whatever um we just would play video games he brought his xbox in and he we just kept it there and we would play like 
uh, Need for Speed, and all these other video games literally every day for like a year. And then they got rid of the job because I think they just realized it was pointless and they were giving us hundreds and hundreds of dollars to sit there and just play video games and not do anything else. <laughs> I remember I remember that. I remember you talking about that. Like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm at work. What are you doing? Playing Xbox. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Gosh. It's a good <laughs> job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was great. Especially, in co- like, I'm in college. Like, I'm in between classes. I have nothing to do, so I'm working, making money, and just playing video games. Like, it was, it was awesome. Not a bad gig. You know, I started, uh, you know, I'm still in, I'm still in production. You know, I do producing and voice acting and, you know, my first job, I was, I was a video editor and I got that was 17 and most of my jobs have been career related, um, except for two. And one of them was, was Pizza Hut. I was just taking anything. Oh, yes. The economy crashed. Everything was bad. Everything was going out of business and it sucked. Um, they hired me. And gosh, and I don't even care what I'm going to say. I mean, the, the general manager or whoever was running it, like he was just a dick, you know, and you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep this positive. Anyway, I think, what can I say? So when people are making pizzas, I'm a huge pain in the ass. If you, if you know me in real life, I'm just a pain in the ass. <laughs> so, and I, I get bored easily. So I was a delivery driver. So in between deliveries, like I would just have to do like random stuff to be doing something. Sometimes I get bored. So like when people are making the pizzas, I would grab like a fistful of pepperoni. And I would just throw pepperoni at people while they were trying to work and stuff. Um, that was, that was what I did. I kind of started that. I kind of got everyone turned on to like throwing ingredients you know, at each other, which, which is probably not good. We didn't put in the pizza or anything, you know, it fell on the floor, you know, it goes in the garbage, right? You know who you're talking about, like, health code violations, but Well, we know? threw it out. <laughs> okay, was, you know, I don't know. Okay. Well, I was supposed to get my food handler's card, but I never got it. They never made me. Clearly. Well, yeah. I took the whatever. I wonder why. I took the, you it's know, funny. I took the whatever training video. You know, the chicken has to be 165 degrees. And whatever nonsense, you know. One of the best things I heard above the milk, you know, yeah. Yeah, you know, all that stuff. Gosh, in the freezer is yeah. so cold. It was a stupid job. Um I learned how to cut peppers really good though. I was at a barbecue last weekend and and somebody specifically pointed out how nice the peppers looked. Because we made <laughs> we made our own pizzas. I am I am a pepper cutting expert. Okay. The secret is you take it. And you, it gets like dying. You pop the the top of it, and the whole thing's yes. a core. You can rip it in half, and then you dice it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Cool. I am great at cutting peppers. That's the best thing I got out of that job. I I got robbed like a few months into it, and I quit. <laughs> you know that was it. You know, getting robbed at gunpoint is not fun. Uh, I even yeah. delivered pizza to Ken at one point. Uh, do you remember that? I just showed up and I brought you your pizza. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I, it's funny because like the, between my sophomore and junior year, I got a job at Domino's Pizza. That Did was my really? first what I called real job. Yes. Was Domino's Pizza. Like that was my first real high school job. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't admit this too, but you're right about the food and health, food and health. <laughs> and that you can get away working at a pizza joint. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't figure out how to flip a pizza dough. <laughs> so how many pizza doughs hit the ground? <laughs> and they had to throw them away. Of course they would Oh, like, okay. Oh, I was like, <laughs> well, like don't, don't say you served it. Them. I'll have to cut it out. <laughs> yeah, so like luckily like that, you know, they they were they weren't that bad, but they put me on the topping line because dude, you can't screw up putting toppings on a pizza. Yeah. But it was a pretty, like, how would you say it? It was one of those small Domino's pizza. Well, mostly it was not dine-in. It was just delivery, which I think all Domino's are just delivery. They don't do dine-in, yeah. if I remember correctly. And um, it was, I would, like, the, they put me on the line to, like, do the sprinkling of the cheese. And I would sprinkle some cheese on. And yeah. then it's like, you know, I take a bite. 
can. <laughs> put pepperonis on it. Take a bite. Put that sausage on it. Take a bite. <laughs> and then have it all ready. <laughs> Order up. <laughs> and I'm figuring like, hey, it's gonna cook off any of my germs. It's like a, you know, whatever 500 degree oven. It's no problem with that. Nobody ever said anything to me about it. That's fair. No, I didn't like take the sausage out of my mouth and put it on the pizza. I just took a bite of the sausage <laughs> and then I put some on the pizza. <laughs> you know what I mean? I had to make sure it was good. You know, you had to make sure like that the, the sausage or the pepperoni is good before you put on the pizza. And, but uh, I remember check, one night. It was a bad thunderstorm and I had to answer phones too as well. So I'd answer my job was answering phones because I wasn't old enough to drive to deliver yet and um, put toppings on the pizza. Well, one of the nights during a thunderstorm, the power went out, but the ovens were still making pizzas because we could get phone lines still going through yeah. and the ovens could still cook pizzas. So we were using flashlights making pizzas and putting the toppings on and throw them in the ovens and still doing deliveries. We're like dripping, beating sweat. So I don't know how much sweat probably got on these pizzas that were being thrown in the oven. (laughs) It was probably some of the most disgusting pizzas ever delivered from Domino's pizzas. And eventually like the manager said, dude, let's just close it up, man. We just can't, you know, this is, this is getting unbearable because we're just like dripping, beating sweat. And it's like summertime and humidity was just through the roof. It was just, like a really like one of the most crazy nights ever working inside Domino's there. And then it was like um, when school started back up again, you know, I, I didn't have time to do the the job. And that was the end of my Domino's pizza experience. But it was some pretty fun times working with Domino's pizza just that summer. Wow. I, so mm-hmm. I worked at a pizzeria, too. Wow, nice. we all worked at a pizza place. But I worked at a pizzeria for like three years. I don't know oh. if you. Knew oh, that. mine was six months because I got robbed. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not doing. Yeah, that. like, I mean, I I enjoyed it. I mean, like, I like the guy I worked for, so you know, it was fun. I did it through college. I did it while I was teaching, and I don't know. It was like I hated delivering pizza, but everything else I liked. Like people would come in buy a slice you know, heat up the slice or, or put some toppings on it, heat it up and give them a slice. That was fun. Although I also like cleaned, like did the dishes at night and mopped and took phone calls. Yeah. I mean, basically did everything. That's, I was, I mean, that's what Pizza Hut was like. I had to do all that. And, but I mean, I, I don't know. I, I actually, I mean, it was fun. The only thing that really sucked was where I worked. There was no uh, AC. There was only AC in like the manager's office. So the summer times in New York, it would be like a hundred degrees and humid. Mm-hmm. And you would just want to stay in there because it's a 450, 500 degree oven just blowing and it's a hundred degrees mm-hmm. outside. And it would just be, you'd just be sweating the entire shift. And then in the winter, you were just freezing the entire shift because it'd be snowing outside and the heater's only in the manager's office. So it was like, pick your poison it was only nice for like a couple of months in the spring and the fall and that was it um but it was fun i had a blast i, I like, kind of feel bad that you guys had like such well ken didn't have as bad but blade had a really bad experience you know <laughs> delivering pizzas and yeah, stuff like i loved it but except no for tipping. i no one tipping oh yeah that's always horrible and then what's what sucked for me though was driving when it was snowing like we would still have to like deliver in the snow. And I don't know how many times like I would be like driving up this like crazy, you know, hill and my car would just stop. The tires would stop and I'd just slowly be sliding down the hill backwards. I'm like, I hope I don't hit anybody for this $3 tip I'm about to get for this pizza and just <laughs> sliding down a hill. Oh my gosh. It was so bad. Oh, and then man. that when that, that one time that it happened, I parked my car at the bottom of the hill and just walked for like a mile up a hill to deliver this person's pizza. You're like the post office of pizzas. Rain or snow, you will get your pizza. I was worried my toes, my car was to get towed because like it took so long to go grab it and come back. Yeah. Oh man. And I have some other stories, but I can't say them on 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 streams. Oh yeah, yeah. (laughs) Got a got a couple of those already already avoided. Um. Yeah, gosh, delivering pizza. I didn't realize. I didn't. I don't. I never. I never thought about that. You know that we all 
delivered pizza. That's that's pretty crazy. We're, we're all that much closer to being like Spider Man. <laughs> exactly. Interesting. Pizza time. <laughs> oh, any, anyone else? Anyone else have anything before we wrap this up? I do. It's like that. Uh, how many times were you guys let go from your job for a stupid reason? I was. I've uh, never been let go except for going out of business. Yeah, me either. I, the, 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 the gym thing, they got rid of the position because they couldn't afford to pay people for no reason. And yeah. my last job, they went out of business thanks to, you know, the recent uh, fun times the economy's had. So yeah. wow. that's about it. Out of business. I've never been let go. Quit. And I quit uh, all my other jobs. Out of business, quit, 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 self-employed. You had a lot of jobs. I've only only had like three jobs. I think I skipped one where I quit, but I've, the only time I lost a job that I didn't quit from, they went out of business. (laughs) I have never been let go. I was let go three times. (laughs) (laughs) All right, what did you do? <laughs> Is it for uh, eating the sausage before you yes, put it on I the pizza? Like that. I actually, the wide, the, between sophomore and junior year, I was actually let go from Domino's. And I unfortunately had a bad relations, I remember now, with the, with one of the coworkers because she you was like a lady that was like in her 20s and 30s. Uh-huh. And uh, she was she was pregnant at the time. And she used to rail into me because my name was Ken and the the father of her baby was named Ken, but he was no longer in the picture. Uh, and so she would constantly berate me about anything I did wrong at work. And uh, uh, I stupidly lost my cool, just like any teenager would. She, uh, she unfortunately uh, told my manager about what I said and the manager had that sit down talk with me and he goes, Ken, you know, I got to let you go for that. And then I go, Do Why? You, you know, don't you hear how much she berates me? And like, she calls me, do you know, like she calls me bad names. She calls me, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but she's an adult and she has to do this for her living. You're doing this for her side, you know, for side income during your summertime. And unfortunately, me keeping you on board, she reported what you said. You never came up and said anything about what she that's, said to you. That's you, guys, you guys all heard it. You know, like you guys all worked a lot. We're all supposed to brush it off. Yeah. But as soon as I say something that's inappropriate, I know I'm the teenager. I got to go. But that was the first time I was ever let go from a job. Gosh, you I'm going to. That, that was probably the most controversial let go of work a job that I had in. My second time was when I was uh, between uh, junior and senior. Well, actually, end of like junior summer and start of senior year in high school, mm-hmm. I worked for Kmart, and I worked in. This is gonna be funny too. I worked in. I wanted to work in their toy department, yeah. But I had to start off in their health and beauty department. Oh <laughs> so wow! I had to, you are a fashion I icon. Like, the way, yeah, I, like I like I had to stock toilet paper. I had to stock pens. I had to stock tampons i had to do you know what i mean answer yeah. questions about shampoo and stupid stuff like that but as soon as i had my break time i was walking over to the gi joe and star wars toys and yeah. see what new product came in and uh but uh and that was that was that was it's still kind of a fun job i gotta admit well i i got i got the nickname kmart ken by working at kmart between that time frame and uh but uh it came to the start of football season that year and I was always scheduled to work Saturday mornings because that was a day that I didn't have to go to school. But when football practice kicked on, we do like the Friday night games. And then there were Saturday morning tapes and quick walkthroughs of what happened on the previous night games. Yeah. So um, it started becoming a schedule conflict because I mentioned to him during the summer, it's like, Hey, football season's coming up. Is it okay if I do the closing shift on Saturdays rather than the opening shifts? Mm -hmm. Well, whoever did the schedules kind of, wouldn't always remember that the schedules I'd give them like that. Here's my game schedule. If I could just work the evening shifts on that, it'd be fine. And uh, I started having talks with the store manager and she was telling me like that. 
you're becoming unreliable. And I'm going, I kind of gave you the details about what was coming up. And she goes, well, if you miss one more shift, we're going to have to let you go. I go, okay, well, you know, now that you guys have my schedules, like everything's going to work right now, right? And they go, yeah. Well, my dad uh, tells me during uh, one of the weekends like that, hey, I got Cardinals Cowboys football tickets. I need you to, you know, it's like that. We're going to go to the game. And I go, that's awesome. Emmett Smith was a stud running back. Everything was like, you know, Troy Aikman, it was the Cowboys were the it franchise of that time frame. And, uh, you know, I'm going like, dad, dude, I'm going to get fired. He goes, why? <laughs> what do you mean? It's like that. I've already been warned that I can't miss any more days that I'm scheduled for. I even worked out the football practices with my, you know, manager. I gave her all the dates so we wouldn't have any schedule snafus. And I, you know, I, I can't go to this game. And he goes, sure you can. And I go, what do you mean? Sure he can call him and tell him it's a family emergency. <laughs> That you can't go to work that day. Yeah. And I'm going, Dad, lying to him. And he goes, Well, it is a family emergency. We're going to the game. <laughs> kind of going, Thanks, Dad. This is really great, you know? And so um I called my work and then I said, Yeah, a family emergency came up and I can't make it into work today. And they go, Ken, you do know that this is, you know, your last warning if you miss this day, we 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 may take you off the schedule completely. And and I go, I know, but it's a family emergency. That's, and like I I, that's to, I can't make it in. You're allowed to call out. Yeah. And but I, I already had missed so many days already. They were kind of do you know what I mean? Like they were they were kind of unofficially done with me. And so I didn't know I was fired. So I went to the game, you know, Cardinals lost, of course. Cowboys were just that awesome of a team. Emmett Smith had a great day. It was blah blah blah. Fun to go watch. I go in to check my schedule the next week and I'm like playing like stupid, I guess you could say once again, another teenage thing to do. Yeah. I, I look at the schedule and go, my name's not on the schedule. And so I pick up my paycheck and I go to the manager and I said, Hey, I noticed my name was off the schedule. Is there any reason why? And she goes, yeah. I remember that phone call you gave to us last week about uh, not be able to make it because of family emergency. And I go, how'd that go? And I go, I mean, it, it was uh it was, it was fine. You know, luckily everything worked out. Okay. And he goes, well, yeah, it worked out for you, but now you don't have a job. <laughs> I'm saying like, Oh crap. It's like, so there's nothing that I can do to save my job. And she goes, we, we warned you and we, you know, we can't, you know, we, we no longer work here. I said, okay. That's cool. So that was, uh, that was the that's NYP illegal. Mart experience. That's illegal. Yeah. So and this is 1991. Yeah. And once again, you're a minor. Do you know well, what I mean? And, this doesn't mean you for that. Yeah. The what? Yeah, that's right. As a, as Rain Man would say, Kmart sucks. Kmart sucks. <laughs> um, now Kmart is gone, and we're still here. And so I guess that's yeah, Kmart's like gone, but Ken's still here. <laughs> Wait. No, Wait, you, 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 you remember? You remember when I quit my 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 job working at the gym at, at LA Fitness? Oh, there was a lot of drama. I don't know what to say, so I. It was like December I thirtieth, twenty ninth, or something. I'm not. Remember saying we anything. were. What? What? I don't know. It just seemed like a lot of stuff. Well, I'm not going to say about all that stuff. I'm just going to mention like how it happened. Remember? I was, I was, I was like, you know, mad at work because the whole thing is just nonsense. I'm not even get into that part, but like that place sucks. Right, one of the worst places on the planet. Anyway, uh, so we're just you know dri driving home from work that day. Work kind of you know sucks. Uh, I'm texting my 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 the regional manager who is like technically my manager. Um, and I'm texting Blade and our friends because we're like, hey, you know, we're 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 out at this uh, at this uh, brewery or whatever or 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 restaurant come meet us there. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I just got out of work. And then you guys just text me, just quit. And I was like, you know what? Fine. <laughs> he texts the manager, <laughs> I quit. And I got there and I pull up and he's like, oh, hey, how's it? everyone's like, how's it going? I was like, guys, I quit my job. He's like, what? He's like, you told me to quit. So I quit. I was just, I had it. But I was just like, I literally was like, I was like, you know, I'm going to do this just so I can say that like, I guys, I quit 
because you guys texted me. It was it was just I I love that moment. It was a great moment. Gosh, I I barely now that you say it, I remember it. But wow, wow, yeah, I do remember that. That's that's nuts. That's quite a quite a story. I don't have anything that that spectacular, but I I always speak my mind at jobs. I I probably could have been fired a few times, but like I'm, you can always rely on me to be overly honest. But any of my frustrations were like this because I I care. I cared about everything I did. And I, I'm pretty sure everyone understood that, except at Pizza Hut. <clears throat> the guy who ran the the Pizza Hut, he was just a pain, you know. I don't know if you like, you weren't in his circle, like, just treated you like garbage. <clears throat> and I, I don't put up with it, you know. And uh, had a deadline to get like non-slip shoes, you know, you had to get solid black non-slip shoes. Mm-hmm. And I was making less than minimum wage at um pizza hut and nobody tips out here so yeah, i think that's the biggest crock that there's so if you get tips you don't have to be paid minimum wage yeah and then nobody tips out here because they're like oh there's a dollar you know delivery fee like no you have to tip your delivery driver so i had to get solid black non-slip shoes so i went to walmart to find the cheapest shoes i can find i found we're, we're back to shoes now. I found Velcro shoes. I bought them. Velcro, they were like 10 yeah. bucks. Okay. And I showed up to work on them. And my my boss is like, oh, you're, you're supposed to get solid black shoes. And like, they are black. And like, they have a white stripe on the side. And I said, are you kidding me? And then my wow. manager grabbed me and he took me, he dragged me in the back. Because I was really mad because I went on my way to buy new shoes for this stupid job. <clears throat> and he handed me a Sharpie. Oh, so, no. So I colored in the the white stripe and that was it. He didn't say anything. I finished my shift and everything was okay. But I was pissed and I let him know it. And I had I wore velcro you know, shoes. I, I've said that exact <laughs> line to umpires before. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And like you get ejected. Yep. <laughs> when I was when I was like sixteen, I was a senior in high school, yeah. I was sixteen. I got ejected like twice playing travel <laughs> ball because these umpires are just garbage. And I let them know it. Like, oh my gosh. Or one of the times I was safe at home plate by literally like like I slid in, my foot's on home plate. The catcher then catches the ball, then tags me. And it was just, like, it was like, are you kidding me? And when I did that one, because we were talking about shoes, <laughs> I jumped, I literally slid, jumped up in the air and my cleat went f- off, went flying off my left foot somehow. Cause like, I like jump in, like kick my legs. Like, are you kidding me? And my cleat went flying. And I remember thinking, oh, this is, this sucks. Like, this is really like embarrassing. <laughs> and I was like, are you effing kidding me? And then I just immediately got ejected, and I just I lost my mind. I started screaming at him. My manager grabbed me. I went to go get my shoe, and he was just, <laughs> I was just so mad. Oh my gosh! gosh dude. I didn't know this episode was going to be so about shoes. <laughs> and we really have Kendall. You know for that. Yeah, I, I got a funny athletic shoe story. I did not know how important track spikes were or cleats, like with that oh, screw yeah. spikes. My freshman year of track, we were up at Globe at a track meet. I was trying to run an open hundred with regular Nike Pegasus shoes on. And uh, doing the, the open hundred, you know, no problem coming out of the blocks and sprinting as fast as I could. I tried leaning over. It's a dirt track to cross the finish line. My feet totally lost grip and I went flying through the finish line. Wow. I remember scarring up my elbows and it was just kind of like cleaning the dirt and the rocks outside of your skin and your knees. And you're kind of going, Oh, that's why the coach recommended track spikes. <laughs> and my dad didn't believe like I needed track spikes to, uh, do you know what I mean? For, for races, mm-hmm. and he goes, well, practice, you don't need them. Why do you need them for the races? And I go, that's just, it's on a dirt track. You know, we do our, practices on you know dirt tracks as well but 
when you're sprinting full speed versus, you know, leaning forward, that's why they tell you to get the track spike so your feet stayed grip on the dirt and learned the hard way. Luckily, it wasn't majorly hurt, but then I said, hey, dad, check this out. Track spikes. <laughs> yeah, no he goes, kidding. Okay, we'll go get track spikes now for you. I see your point. They're, they're so, tools. That was, yeah. you, can't, you can't skimp on the tools, you know. The, exactly. The tool of the trade. Like, you, you don't know until you know. Like, it's, it is yep. important. Yeah. Totally. Totally got that. Yeah, you always got to wear what you're supposed to wear. <laughs> exactly. I 100% know that from so many different instances. Some I can't mention or don't want to talk about ever again on stream. I can, yeah, I can, I can see that for sure. <clears throat> I think that's about all the time we have for today. Can I keep it a, a quote regular size episode? Um, we mm-hmm. appreciate you all taking the time to listen. We're not kept chat this week. I think we're going to put some of our social media pages in the description of this podcast. So you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. All right, nightcap chat and nightcap underscore chat on Instagram. Nightcap chat on, on Twitter, but we don't really pay attention to Twitter. We just let an automatic feed go there. And you won't want to miss next week. I'm not even going to say it yet because it's one of those things where anything can happen. And like, just in case, you know, we have to delay something, but most likely next week's episode is going to be awesome and so much fun. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, and if you're interested in any of my nonsense escapades, I'm Blade O'Neill. It's Blade O'Neill on Twitter and Instagram and Blade O'Neill VO on Facebook. Ken. And yeah, I'm Ken Brown. Thanks guys for listening. As always at drawn to comics, you can find us in downtown Glendale, Arizona, and also our fun posts on Facebook and Instagram of what's new with the store and what different things we're doing for fun at the shop. Thanks for listening. And I'm Lance. You can catch me on Twitch at Tales of Lance playing some playing some video games, some some various games, and uh, Twitter and Instagram at Tales of Lance. We appreciate you all taking the time to listen, like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends about us. Share it on social media. We love you all. Be safe. And we will catch you all next week. Thank you, everyone. Have a good week.